an auspicious revival. This $93 million science fiction film grossed nearly half a billion following its worldwide release in August of 2011. Director Rupert Wyatt borrows concepts and styles from earlier entries and other films to craft a compelling story. Although resembling the premise of the series' fourth installment, 1972's Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, this film isn't a proper remake, but rather a re-envisioning of the ideas set forth in the original five films. In fact, its narrative structure much more closely parallels Deep Blue Sea than anything else. The PG-13 rated plot follows scientist James Franco, who inadvertently creates a drug that boosts simian brain capacity when searching for a cure to Alzheimer's. Later, his pet ape, with his newly boosted brain power, helps start an evolution revolution when he frees his species from a harsh primate sanctuary. Unlike the original, there's very little here in the way of political commentary. The ape revolt is hardly analogous to issues with society. Even still, though, the story is fascinating and well told, with great performances by most of the cast. I say most, since Frida Pinto contributes very little as Franco's love interest. It's not really her fault, though, the script just doesn't give her much development. John Lithgow, though, is fantastic, portraying the Alzheimer-stricken father, who bounces from forgetful frustration to excited fatherhood when the effects of the drug begin transforming him and his simian housemate. Franco himself does solid work as the gentle but ambitious scientist, but feels out of place in the overly serious story. Last but not least, Andy Serkis's CGI-assist portrayal of house ape turned super smart rebellion leader Caesar is a remarkable achievement, and the real hero of the narrative. Even without speaking dialogue for most of the picture, he undergoes a tremendously satisfying arc with real depth and humanity. What's this? What's he doing? I don't believe that. What? He's asking you permission. It's a supplicating gesture. It's okay. Come on, Caesar. Off you go! Look at him go! The 110 minute film sprinkles in plenty of terrific references and throwbacks to the original apes. Some are subtle, while others are pretty overt, like the repetition of Heston's iconic line, Take your stinking paw off me, you damn dirty ape, which is met with a similarly earth-shattering response, Caesar's first spoken word. More or less a cautionary tale about the dangers of oppressing our animal friends, and perhaps a warning about scientific ambition, Rise feels a bit unbalanced. The pacing is a careful march towards an inevitable outcome, until the final act when everything is hurried along for a thrilling set piece on the Golden Gate Bridge. Whereas the 1968 film was groundbreaking for its use of prosthetic makeup, this big-budget reboot similarly impresses with astonishingly lifelike motion capture technology, which scored Rise its only Academy Award nomination. This movie won't likely be heralded as a classic anytime soon, but it's thoroughly entertaining from start to finish. A wonderful update to a decades-old franchise that should appeal to old fans as well as newcomers, it's also a surprisingly rewatchable film that sets up its superior sequel quite well. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is a fresh reboot with impressive effects. I thought it was great. That does it for this review, but if you'd like to watch more Movie Night, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit the Jog Wheel YouTube channel to see full episodes of the show, in addition to the other content I produce. My name is Jonathan Paul. Thanks for watching. Have a good movie night.